No matter what neighborhood of St. Paul you may find yourself in, chances are good that you will encounter a building designed early last century by municipal architect Clarence Wesley Wigington. Among the dozens of local buildings attributed to him are park structures, schools, and fire stations. Three of them are on the National Register of Historic Places, the Highland Park Water Tower, the Holman Airfield Administration Building, and the Harriet Island Pavilion, which is now known as the Clarence W. Wigington Pavilion. So, who was Clarence W. Wigington and why is there a prominent St. Paul building named after him? To find the answer, let's go back to 1915, when this 32-year-old husband and father of three was looking for work. Wigington was a gifted draftsman, struggling to establish his own architectural practice when his wife encouraged him to test for a civil service job with St. Paul's Office of the City Architect. He scored the highest of all the applicants and began what was to be a long and fruitful career with the city of St. Paul. Wigington was a pioneer. In 1910, the U.S. Census listed only 59 black architects, artists, and draftsmen. Wigington was Minnesota's first black registered architect and our nation's first black municipal architect. From 1915 to 1949, he oversaw the design of nearly every new civic building in St. Paul. Here are just a few. Schools, such as Como Park Elementary, Chelsea Heights Elementary, and Cleveland Junior High. The facade of the Roy Wilkins Auditorium. Numerous park structures, like the Hamlin Playground Shelter. Several Winter Carnival Ice Palaces and, as previously mentioned, perhaps his most famous work, the Highland Water Tower. The public flocks to the tower on the four days its doors are open each year, climbing the 151 steps that wind around the giant water tank. Visitors arrive at the observation deck with its sweeping views of the Twin Cities. Although Wigington took pride in these enduring landmarks, he claimed to be most proud of the five fanciful Winter Carnival ice palaces he designed in the 1930s and 40s. Wigington died in 1967. His contributions to St. Paul were quite visible, but his name was not commemorated. In 1998, the city recognized his positive impact on our capital city by renaming the Harried Island Pavilion in his honor. It is now called the Clarence W. Wigington Pavilion.